Many of you have already gone through the getting started tutorials. If you haven't already done so, I suggest you do that before continuing on with this video. This particular video is going to go over creating uh, an eMotion project from scratch using the eMotion modules. And then I will also go over the process for creating your own modules to extend the capacities of the eMotion software client. So let's take a look at our demo project here. We have this untitled digital data workstation. And let's also take a look at the contents of our eMotion folder. This is the folder that you should have installed under Mac 6, Cycling 74, and eMotion. And there's quite a few things in here. And I want to tell you the difference between components and modules. Components are the Mac's externals that are required in order to run all of the software client material. Um, this includes things like the MSD Spring Mass Physical Model, Open Sound Control, the ICST Ambisonics, um, and I even included the FTDI USB serial driver um, in this little uh, thing. The installer also exists here as well for the serial driver. Um, you should have already done that by now. Now, instead of components, or in addition to it, we have modules. And modules are essentially little max patches, abstractions, as it were, um, that extend the eMotion software capabilities. And we'll go over the kind of eMotion objects you need to use in order to create your own uh, eMotion modules. So let's go ahead and start a project from scratch. The first thing we're going to do is just open up a blank max window. Bam. I'm going to move this screen recording box down here. Let me minimize that. All right. So when you're going to use eMotion in a blank project, you don't want to use the demo project or anything like that. You need to call up a few eMotion objects. And the most critical one exists in the eMotion folder here and it's called the eMotion Fuse. So we're just going to type that in. eMotion Fuse. Or, you know, another good way to do it is just copy the name and then paste it into here. Usually the menu should auto-populate. I want you to notice a box pops up. That's the eMotion Autogen. You might actually see that in the menu here. That is already embedded in the Fuse. Now we go ahead and open it up. Now this inlet right here doesn't actually do anything. I just put it here in case you want to uh, send a message to open it up via P control. And then you can do an open message to P control. And then it's just a matter of you know putting a load bang onto open and then it will open up automatically. I'll just go to load bang uh, and bam. And now it's going to open up this module automatically on startup. Bam, just like that. All right. And so before you actually reach this point, you really should have the eMotion fuse plugged into the hardware. And that's because on startup, um, you uh, or the module actually looks for all the available serial devices. If you are plugging it in right now, go ahead and just uh, reload the eMotion Fuse module by just you know erasing a letter, retyping it, and that refreshes it. And so there you go, and it should pop up. You want to make sure this uh, AM and then a few arbitrary numbers are selected here, and then turn it on. And then I'm going to go ahead and turn on a uh, uh, module, or not a module, an emote. This is the eMotion Twist. Notice how it has just popped up here. It's going to do its calibration scheme. Um, not really interested in that because uh, I detailed calibration in the previous video. So go ahead and look at that one for more details if you want to learn about calibrating the eMotion Twist. But suffice it to say, it's there. And then I'm going to also uh, start a new digital data workstation. 
You can use the Untitled Digital Data Workstation from your eMotion demo project. That should have been in your eMotion installer. And this is um, just the, the, the primary template that you want to open up and then save as into something else. So here's my Untitled Digital Data Workstation. This is very important, this notion of saving all your files in a project folder. So to save your files in a project folder, because this is a new project I've made from scratch, I'm gonna go to File and save my digital data workstation as something else. I'm just gonna go in here. I'm gonna create a new project folder. I'm gonna say Emotion Demo 101. I'm gonna create this, and now I'm going to call this my 101 digital data workstation. All right. And then while I'm at it, I'm just going to go ahead and save this project that has all of my modules in here, my eMotion modules. So I'm going to go ahead and save it. And I'm just going to say, you know, my project. All right. And so now I have a folder in my CUDEL directory, my home directory, called eMotion Demo 101. And it has my 101 digital data workstation and my project. Both are saved in there. Next time I want to open up this project for later, all of my settings for the digital data workstation will be saved here and the project file here. So you no longer need to dig into you know, the, um, the, ins the demo project installer folder. All right, so um, how then do we create modules? Let's take a look at this. I'm gonna create a new track and I want you to notice that my inputs are all populated for the IMU0, which is my eMotion twist with the ID of zero. That shows up here. Okay, so I'm just kind of moving it around. And it's not calibrated right now, so it's going to be a little jittery. That's fine for this particular tutorial. I want you to notice I'm going to turn on my Discover 7 and notice how my Discover 7 has just popped up and here it is and when I turn on a new emote my input list well it won't in order to refresh your input list you're going to need to actually you know, delete then create a new track and now my input list has been repopulated uh, we'll go ahead and fix this in a later version of the software to have the lists refresh automatically on startup and that's going to be a trivial fix but uh, you know time is limited. I want you to now to notice that I only have two outputs net raw and net OSC and I'm going to demo this in another tutorial. We also have MIDI control out and this is where you would specify this tracks controller and channel number and your MIDI output to control other software. But we're not interested in that. We're actually interested in designing a new module. Let's say I want a module that will, um, I don't know, uh, move a slider around. And this slider is going to, ah, here's a good module example. I want to just simply control the amplitude of an input source for a microphone. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start up a new project. And the reason why this is so important is eMotion is based on, this is a little soapbox, eMotion is based on modularizing the intricacies of, um, of creating music software. And so if we can create a tool, if you have an idea for a module that you think might be used a lot or something you'll use a lot, uh, you might f uh, find others will find this useful, then go ahead and create a module. So here's how we do it. I'm, because I want to control an input source, I'm going to go ahead and throw in an ADC, right? This converts my, uh, my input here. I'm going to go ahead and throw in a, a meter just so you can see what's happening. And actually, you know, I'm going to use an easy ADC. That way I can actually turn it on and off pretty easy, right? So here we go, and you're getting my input signal. You're hearing a squeaky ball from my dog. Um, I want to control the amplitude, right? So I'm going to use a gain object. I'm going to simply plug it in here. And then 
Um, I'm gonna just send it right out. Hey, Ember. <laughs> my apologies, my dog is playing with her squeaky ball. I'm gonna send it out to an easy deck. Easy deck. And so simple input, gain, output. Perfect. All right, now how do we control this using emotion? How do we populate something in this output menu? And so whenever we start up this module, the output is going to be generated automatically in all of your track's output menu. There's a special object here called receiver that I made, um, R-E-C-E-I-V-E-R. And then receiver actually takes a, um, a, an argument and you just name this. So I'm gonna call this receiver chat gain. I'm gonna go ahead and attach this to, I don't know, a float box here so I can kind of see what's going on. And let's take a look at what happens with the output menu. Notice how chat gain has just been populated. I'm going to change the input menu to something, well let's see, this is my accelerometer, I believe. Yep. So this is my accelerometer's roll access. And I want you to notice now that I've selected output gain that I have my numbers all right here. Now I can do one of two things to rescale these values. I could um, with my module, go ahead and rescale it here. And this is probably the smartest choice, and I'll tell you why. I'm going to go ahead and scale uh, 0 point to 1 point, because that's the range of values that most of the emotion sensor spits out when they're fully calibrated. And I'm going to put uh, 0 to... I think gain has, what, a slider range of 150-something, 157? You can always look that up, right? It's pretty easy. So I'm going to do that now in the inspector window. One fi yeah, 0 to 157. Perfect. And I'm going to go ahead and place this in here. And put this in the gain input. Oops. There we go. And now I'm controlling the gain, right? Now this is, of course, you can use any sensor now to uh, place the output as the gain destination, right? So for example, I'm going to change this to my IMU Euler X, and now my, my twist is going to be controlling the amount of, of uh, amplitude or gain on this input channel. So it's all very powerful, this, this idea. The reason why I wanted to rescale in the module itself is because I want any random track, I know any random track when it first generates is going to give me a roughly calibrated value between 0 point and 1 point. And I could rescale it in the track itself using this, uh, this dialog box that I demonstrated in a previous tutorial. But I don't want the user to have to rescale each and every individual track as they're being created. Uh, I would rather it just kind of work out of the box. And we know that it's going to take a 0 to 1 floating point value, and it's going to convert it into the full range of the slider. So that's, uh, that's the reasoning behind that. It's just more simple. So when you save a module, it's as simple as you know Apple S, you can save the module in your project folder if you'd like, and then call it up. So I'm just going to call this um, uh, audio gain. I'm going to call this mod audio gain. So you can prefix all of your modules with the word mod. This will help you recognize what is actually being used in a module. And then I'm going to close this. And now remember, you can uh, go ahead and call it up as an abstraction. So I'm going to do mod. I'm going to go back to my project folder. Just copy and paste. Mod audio gain. And now take a look, because we have check gain here. We have check gain, you know, and all of those other things. And so all of your lists are going to be populated with that now for the output. And 
This is basically it. And now you can use this module, or anybody rather, that's the beauty of it. Anybody can u call this module up in their project folder, and then they have immediate accessibility to that particular function or feature. And if they happen to be Max users, they can modify this to their own purposes. So I hope you found that useful. Um, this is an incredible, uh, incredibly useful uh, tool. I'm going to do this, uh, I'm just going to call it full. And now I want you to notice that full has now been populated in all these menus. All right. This is uh, Chet Udell signing off.